good morning, hope you're all doing well. So we're back out the first time after Christmas. Hope you all had a fantastic Christmas and New Year. And I've just come out today because we meet up, met up with Bry Barnum and we're gonna go and have a bit of a tour around the lake, see what we can find today. But we've come to this first location that we actually visited last year when he was over. And it's this lovely little bit of woodland that we explored last time. And there's some lovely oak trees, a few birch in here, but this, this oak here really stood out to me this morning as we were walking through here. And as you can see, it's quite cold. We've got frost, maybe not as much frost as I would have liked, but just kind of waiting around for a little bit of light now. You can see the shape that I'm going for here is a really beautiful gnarly old oak with a really long branch, which goes across from the right hand side to the left there. And I'm just using that in a, in a pano format because as you can see above here, right above my head, we've got sky that's up on the fells behind. And that's, uh, I think that's the back end of Cat Bells actually, back there. Um, and you can see that where the sky comes up to the top of the frame there, I want to cut that off in a kind of pano format. But what I'm actually just waiting for a little bit of light because the, the light's still trying to come up behind you there, behind the hills. so. I'm going to get this set up, I'm going to show you the back of the camera so I can kind of explain my thinking with the shot and you, I'll be able to walk you through why I'm doing it in a, in a pano format this time because of this sky there. So I'll get that set up and I'll get you to the back of the camera and walk you through it. So now I've actually got this on the back of the camera for you to see, I'll click record so you can see what I'm viewing and you can just see there I've got it in this pano format and I know I shoot this quite a lot but in this instance I'm finding that it works really quite well. Just adjust my settings here. So as you can see, I've got my focus point almost in the middle of the frame, but on that kind of lower third. And the reason for doing this pano is if I zoom out now, in fact, I can't zoom out. So if I adjust my crop, say to a 16 by nine, you can see how much sky is involved in that frame. And obviously I want to eliminate that as much as possible because obviously the eye's drawn to the brightest part of the frame and it's just gonna, it looks way too distracting. So the idea of going to that crop is just to eliminate all that sky altogether, simplifies the composition, gets rid of all that bright element in the top. And you can see behind this tree, it's, it's quite white. There's quite a lot of um, atmosphere behind there. And that's kind of what I want really. It would have been nice for a little bit more fog. The, the nice thing about in here though, at the minute, although it's quite, the light's not particularly bright. So I don't really have to worry about my ISO too much because there's no wind, there's no breeze, there's no movement in branches or anything. So I don't need to worry about that at all. I can just focus on getting the settings that are, are right for the scene and not have to worry really about the wind. So at the minute, I'm at ISO 100 F16 at one and a half seconds. Now, obviously normally in woodland, you wouldn't want that longer shutter speed because there'd be too much movement. But as I said, there's nothing here. So you'll have to excuse the road noise because it's right just behind you there. So I'm just grabbing these shots at the minute, but it would be much nicer if we get a little bit of side light coming in to illuminate these branches on the side here and give the image a bit more depth. But as you can see, I've got the, the wall on the lower side of the frame there. We've also got some of these sort of mossy colored stones down in the bottom as well, which just contrasts nicely against the background behind the tree. And then it also helps to separate that tree off as well. I've got the other tree on the right hand side of the frame and that kind of just balances the frame slightly and then I've got a rock on the lower left down here and all those elements I think really work quite nicely together there's obviously some nice red bracken in there as well I don't know how much of that I'm going to leave in because there's a little bit just in between these two rocks here I'm not too sure about because it's in the lower section of the frame but I really like the white frost and I think that would really just be set off if we get a bit of light just to hit this frost and just kind of illuminate it and and bring a bit more interest to the shot I think. So what I'm going to do is now that I've shown you the uh, frame I'm just going to wait around for the light and when it happens I'll pop that shot up next for you.
So we're just walking down the opposite side of the river from where we did that first photograph there. I've noticed this area quite a few times and wondered how to get to it, but definitely worth exploring this area because we've actually come across, a, there's almost like a dip as you're walking down and that dip is holding the hoar frost in quite nicely. And there's a couple of compositions that I've kind of spotted just on the way through here. So I'm going to check those out because the, the further you head back the other way, back behind me there, the frost all, all dissipates because it starts going uphill again. So definitely worth hanging around in this little area here because we've still got frost and it's highlighting the edges of the branches nicely. So I'm going to have a look around, check the couple of compositions out that I saw over here and then uh, we'll work from there, see if I've found anything worth talking about. So as you can see, this is the first little composition that stood out to me. You can see the shape of this little tree here and it's, uh, it's absolutely beautiful and it really stood out to me as I came around the corner. Now, the reason why I've come back to this one is because, like I just said, this hoar frost is hanging around this area, but I think the temperature is actually rising because it's starting to melt. So I actually really love the fact that these white bits of frost are just accentuating the edges of the uh, branches here so i want to make the most of that and in order to make the most of it i have to capture it while it's actually here and it is fading quite rapidly now so really want to get this shot taken so i'm going to line this one up and then get you to the back of the camera with that one the other one is just over here just behind me you can see here if i'm just pointing this one out and that one looks more like a pano to me, whereas this one's more of a 16 by 9 shot. But it looks more of a pano, so I could get this, the centre of the tree almost in the middle of the frame there with the branches curling over on either sides. But going to work quite fast, get this one set up, and then I'll walk you through it. So with this first one, if I just show you the back of the screen now. There we go. You can see I've got it set up as a 16 by 9 and basically I've got my focus point over actually on the tree trunk itself. Now you'll notice I've moved it across to the left and you'll also notice the amount of light that's now hitting my face. And this is why I really wanted to capture this image now because the sun is coming out and not only is it um, adding more accents to the edges of these branches, but it's also melting this hoar frost off quite quickly. So I really want to grab these shots as soon as possible. So I'm going to keep grabbing shots as I'm talking to you. So yeah, basically lined it up with the, the composition over to the left. So I've got more room on the right for this branch that comes up here to kind of enter into the right hand side of the frame. I've got the, the middle of the tree almost in the middle um, section of the image there. And then at the top section, I can't quite get the top of the tree in because obviously I've got sky right above. So I've cropped that down using that 16 by 9 cropped. I've left enough room down at the bottom of the frame so I don't cut off the trunk at the base there but what I have got down at the bottom is a lot of this bracken and it's quite messy so I'm trying to eliminate as much of the bracket, bracken down at the bottom side of the frame as possible. Really simple settings I'm at, at ISO 100, I'm at f16 at a third of a second and I'm one stop under because I'm just kind of making sure I don't get any hot spots because of this light creeping in now. But I really want to get this image and then move on to the other one before that all dissipates over there as well. It's going to keep checking this, making sure my histogram's okay. Now, obviously looking at this image, it's quite busy. There's quite a lot going on and it would really help if there was a lot more atmosphere behind the tree, maybe some fog, something like that. Now, all I can really do in post is to try and desaturate the background and maybe add a little bit of haze in there just to kind of add that a little bit of separation but ideally I want that as natural as possible so it's probably one of those things that I'm going to take a shot of now see how the shot turns out and if if it looks really nice on the back of uh, on, the, on my monitor when I get it home it's somewhere that I really want to return to when the conditions are more favorable but yeah it's a really beautiful nice shape to the tree i'm just having to watch as well because there's obviously a road on the other side of this river here and every now and then i'm getting a car going past so i really don't want that in my frame as you can probably see i've captured it there <laughs> might have done actually um so yeah really simple shot nothing much to it i just want to keep it as level as possible 
I'm using the white of the half frost on the lower section of the image just to add that bit of um, contrast between the background and the tree itself. If this shot's turned out all right, I'll pop it up next for you and then we'll move on to the next tree. Right, so with this next one, I'll just show you the back of the screen now. Now, hopefully what you'll see is, now the sun keeps coming up above there, so I keep having to adjust my settings. But basically what I'm doing is I'm using the fact that the sun comes in from that left-hand side, almost to add a glow to the left-hand side of the frame. It's absolutely stunning. So I'm just gonna keep firing off shots as I'm talking to you, because it's changing really fast. And as I said, I wanna capture this before it melts. But with this one being more like a pano crop because I want to eliminate that sky again because it's so bright and I'm basically shooting right into the sun here because these this tree that I'm photographing is actually being backlit. So it's really helping to kind of separate it from the background because earlier on when it wasn't being backlit like this, you're getting a lot of that background being able to be seen. In fact, the sun's just dipped now, you'll be able to see that the background comes more into play when that sun's not there. So what the actual backlighting is doing is helping to add that little bit of separation and accent those branches as well. Now you can see how fast that the, uh, the tree's dripping with uh, frost there. So this is why I'm just working really fast. But I think this is just a really nice, simple shot. Now the other thing I'm gonna have to watch for is any little flares that are caused by the sun because I can just see one at the bottom now and if I just put my hand over there you can see that flare disappears now just on that bottom right corner so I'm just gonna have to watch that now what I'll probably do is take a shot with my hand above there to eliminate that flare like that and then I'll take another shot with it as well because what I want to do is I don't want to cut out that glow that's in that top left corner there. So yeah, simple shot, nothing really complicated about it, but I just think it's a really, really nice shot to capture on a day like this. back across to the other side of the river again from where we were before when I took that shot further up the hill there and uh, we've come back to an area that we were actually in last year it's the same place as Brian and I came here last year and it's the same sort of composition only last year it was really harsh in here really quite bright so we've come back now because we're getting this light and it's quite soft it's quite sort of warm looking and as this sun kind of moves across it'll get warmer still and just taking this shot as a, a pano again, because it really lends itself really well to that. What I want to do is get you to the back of the camera and, and show you how I'm going to compose it and what I'm going to do to get around a, a couple of the issues I've got here. Right, so what you should see is I've got this strip pano set up like I was saying, and that darkest tree is almost in the middle of the frame down there, with those other two trees on either side sort of leaning in from left and right. Now in the background there, what I'm trying to do is you've got lots of uh, trees obviously without branches on. I and mean, obviously what I'm trying to do here is get those as white as possible so that it almost looks like mist or fog. 
as you can see now just looking at the back of the camera there it looks as though it's it's got atmosphere back there and it's actually just other trees so what i'll probably do in post is you can see how dark those tree trunks are against that lighter background what i'll actually try and do in post is is bring the whites out of those a lot more so it actually looks as though there's a lot more atmosphere back there than there actually is but really simple shot as you can see you can see that branch on the on the ground there is just leading you into that main tree trunk in the middle that darker one in the center there now obviously there's a couple of areas where the branches are crossing over which i i ideally wouldn't like to be crossing over because I, I think i find it a bit distracting sometimes but sometimes you just got to work with what you have and there's no other way that i can make that not happen really so i'm just using that like it is i'm not really altering anything as far as my composition there i'm at iso 100 f16 and at the minute i'm actually at four seconds because as i said earlier on there's no wind at all in fact there's nothing moving back there that i can see there's a little tiny bit of movement in those leaves back there but honestly i think they're that far away in the frame that you're not actually going to see that movement at all so the light is just dipping behind the the hills here in the background and what i was hoping would happen is as you can see there's light catching on the moss on the right hand side of the frame I'm just waiting for that light just to add that little bit more interest in there but it's not going to last too much longer now and if these clouds above start to catch this should start to glow a little with any luck but it's just a case of waiting and seeing what happens so I'm just going to actually wait around now I've taken a few shots see what happens with the light and I'll pop the shots up when it's done Well, that's been a good fun day today and the light's just starting to fade a little now. We're just hoping that we're going to get a little bit of light in the colour in the sky, eh? Yeah, it might make for the shot, eh? Mm, we'll you never to, know. We'll have to see what happens, though. It's been good to get out, though. Good to get out, Mike. Uh, it's been good to meet up again. Yeah. We'll meet up again before I head back. Well, I've got another couple of trips planned, at least, before you head back, anyway. That's it, I Maybe back here, maybe Scotland. Mm-hmm. And maybe get over to the northeast for a day as well. Yeah, I'll have to north of Castles. I go and take Brian out of his comfort zone and stick him next to a coast. And then be street photography. Oh, <laughs> hell. <laughs> Anyhow, been good to catch up, good to get back, and I'll see you again on the next video. Go and watch Bry's channel if you haven't already, which I'm sure you do anyway. And I'll see you on the next video soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.